Hi, I'm the Morelander and this is Morelander Tactical. Today we are here to look at one of my favourite companies. Um, I think whether you're here on Morelander Tactical or over on my other channel, Morelander EDC, you probably know that I'm a huge fan of Helicon Tex. A uh, Polish company that just make amazing outdoor, tactical, range, loads of different gear, all for that kind of outdoor lifestyle. Um, and yeah, so they've, they've got two chest rigs. So this is the this is the training mini rig or TMR, but there is also not to be confused with the competition rig, which is this one. So I do have the two of them. We'll come back to this one at a, a later date. Um, and you know, if if there's enough people commenting below that you'd like to maybe have a piece so that we can compare the two, I'm more than happy to do that as well. But yes, just for today. So this is the competition. No, sorry, this is the training. If I say competition in the future, I do apologise. Um, this is the training mini rig now before I continue I must say a huge thank you to military first military support military first have been a huge supporter um, of my main channel Moreland EDC for the last three maybe four years um, and when I mentioned to them that I was starting this Moreland a tactical channel they were like yeah let's 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 do this so this was sent to me uh, free of charge by military first the agreement that I have with the awesome team there is, you know, I can make the content that I'd like to make and give you the views that I feel that you guys will, will would like. Um, also, you mean it also means that I can cherry pick the stuff that I really think that I'll like anyway. Um, but if you don't know military, I mean, if you're from the UK and you don't know military first, where where have where have you been hiding? Military first are one of, if not the UK's uh, largest military and outdoor suppliers with i mean they stock pretty much all of helicon texas range but there's also other lines from other manufacturers that they, that they have there as well highly recommend checking them out they post all throughout uh, europe all throughout the world in fact um, and they just have an awesome team there so i just want to say a massive thank you to military first for the continued support that you have um towards my channel yeah it's great uh, but for now let's get back so we are here today to look at the training mini rig from Alcantex should have added that bit but okay roll VT now I think quickly before we get into maybe a little bit closer up so that you can see the features on here um, it's probably best to address what this is constructed from your materials and all of the hardware on here uh, Helicon Tex really do stick to great quality materials, so this is constructed from 500D Cordura. None of your no-name kind of stuff, it is your genuine Cordura material. Um, available in colours, it's Helicon Tex, there's probably at least a, maybe a dozen, let's say, different um, main colours, so you've got your... Um, tan black wolf gray this is adaptive green there is also uh, olive green and then there's probably um, within that dozen then the rest is filled up with different camouflages you've got pen coat you've got atax you've got uh, american woodland you've got polish woodland and so on and so forth all of the hardware on here buckles wise so buckles here so you have two on each side uh, top and bottom um, they are all Wujin buckles I like to see that some uh, some manufacturers are moving away from Duraflex and not that, that I'm, I'm saying that Duraflex and your ITW Nexus kind of buckles are bad buckles um, but Wujin certainly making their name for just you know the quality of the buckles that are on here um, and I'm guessing a lot of companies are also doing because they, they've been able to save on costs as well. Um, which I think is great uh, as long as they pass those back on to you. Um, YKK zippers throughout. There are some sections that do have some hook and loop on here as well. The hook and loop here on the front has the, um, has the chameleon on there. Um, and yeah, it, it's just made to the high standards that you expect from um, from Helicon Tex. Oh, the last thing really, I suppose, is your um, is the webbing on here as well. Again, the webbing is really strong, really high standards, and you also have loops on here as well, just to help with all of the extra webbing that you know you don't you just don't want to have flapping around. Now, I think as far as the features of this are concerned, what will probably be best is if we start at the back uh, and then move our way forward through the different compartments. So first things first, here at the back, you'll be able to see that there are four 
M4 um, style um, mag pouches. Super easy to get in, super easy to get out, and every single one of them has um, a, a bungee that you will make sure that it keeps it in place. The two that are on the side here, if I pull this round to the second side, you can see the whole pouch there. There is some additional um, Velcro here, not Velcro, sorry, elastic here on the side. So if there is a tool or a light, maybe some chem light, something like that that you want to put down there, you certainly can do. Um, but this whole pouch itself um, is stitched into the back panel. And that's the same for both of these two lateral ones. Easy to grab, easy to pull out, easy to get your tabs on there as well. Ripping them off, certainly not any, uh, not at no difficulty. And then plus, if you want to adjust these for different magazines, there is um, there is a cord that you can that you can tie those a little bit tighter. Now the two that are on the back here, so these actually sit inside a pocket. So this is a separate insert. Now I'm just gonna pull this forward uh, like that so that you can see into here. So there are two mag pouches in here which are Velcro that use hook and loop on the front and the back to make sure that they stay in place. On the side here, if you can see there, there's actually just a little bit of a wing which makes me think, rather than having two in here, you could actually expand this out uh, to having three in there. Now, I do have one of these, so this is one of the, um, the Velcro inserts from uh, Warrior Assault Systems. Unfortunately, this one is just a little bit too wide to be able to fit in the gap that goes in there. But I do know that Helicon Tex for the competition rig, which is one that we, I suppose I kind of looked at earlier, um, that doesn't come with any sort of inserts. You have to purchase the inserts separately. So I am going to pick up one of the triple Velcro mag pouches because, well, I want to bring you some content on it, but I also want to see if it will fit in here. So there is a chance that this could be expandable. So rather than just having your four mag pouches on the front, that you could possibly have two lateral ones and then three across there as well. So moving forward, um, I guess I can choose whether I want to go left or right. Um, these, it, it, it's completely symmetrical on whether it's on the left hand side or whether it's on the right hand side, even though I don't know my life from wrong, right, clearly right from my left. You then have two additional pouches here. So you can use these for magazines, which I, I guess really they are predominantly designed for. Uh, this is a nine millimeter, nine millimeter magazine, fits in there fine. This is from a Mark 23 which Mark 23 is um, 45 ACP um, that still again fits in there fine it's just a little bit more of a wiggle room to get it in there but I certainly wouldn't say there's any difficulties getting it in I think if you're running a dump dump pouch dump pouch on the back of your belt struggle to have that one really getting it out is your main concern um, putting it back in there again it's not really much of a struggle on this side uh, I'm running a light on there. Hopefully if I turn the light on you might have just seen that there on the bottom. Um, do you have to be careful with some lights mainly because you can turn them on and off by accident uh, but if you have one of the ones where the side protection just goes up slightly so that they can tail stand then it will help to reduce that uh, and then last but not least on the end here oh so I don't think I've got anything in here I did have something in there but I took it out I had a small um, Leatherman tool in there that fit in perfectly now I will say so some of the other uh, magazine pouches that you get generally they just have this gusseting on the side so that they open and you know they just open the beauty of this one is that they've thought that extra little bit further and they've made sure that they've got some elastic on here so if you do have nothing in there it sits a little flatter against your rig just an extra note and it's these extra little details that I really like from Helicon Tech so where you see that this um, the um, the, the elastic goes through there it, it's it's a complete pass through so if this needs to move left or move right or this needs to move rather than adding additional stress to each side of the elastic it's free to be able to move and the elastic will slip through there um, which again you know I, th I think that is that, that certainly is a great feature on the end of each of your elastic on, on, on the covers uh, there is a, a tab as well that you can grab hold on to uh, to make sure that you can you can rip that up 
underneath each of these, if I just poke my belly out for a second, you'll notice that there is a loop here. This is made from your 550 paracord. Um, so if you have gloves, you want to take your gloves off, you can attach your gloves onto there so that you always know where they are. Maybe if you've got iPro as well, that you can you can kind of close it and pass it down through there as well. Certainly like some of those iPros where they have the um, the magnets on the side so that they don't come open so if you put your iPro on there it, it's just so much easier to find it. Moving inwards then from the two uh, the two magazine pockets that are pouches that are on either either side we then come into more of an admin style pouch here. There is as I mentioned oh no so we do have let's um, thank you to Jackal Firearms for sending this my way. We all love a bit of goon tape. Um, so there is a small pocket here on the front which is readily accessible with this uh, YKK zip. There is a small little kind of garage here on the left hand side that you can push that into. That will mean that it will just flap around a little bit less. Uh, but rather than having the metal poles on here which Let's face it, YKK are pretty durable, um, but it just makes it a little bit more silent so that you don't get that kind of battle rattle when you're running around and all you can hear is just zips flailing around. Uh, instead, they have more of this um, 550 paracord, but it's definitely had its inners removed from it because it just sits a little bit flatter and then they have these uh, heat shrink wraps on there as well. The size on this goes down to about there, that's probably 120 millimeters, um, and then probably it will go all the way across. It also goes all the way up past the zip here, just in case you need to put something in there. Um, certainly for me, putting my car keys in there, just you know, it just means that they're separate from everything else and, and I know where to get them. If you are in a certain situation where maybe you need to have certain meds and Certain sites that you go onto when you're skirmishing, they always want to make sure that they have access to meds instantaneously. A lot of the time they ask you to put them in your top left pocket if you don't have one of those. Keeping your meds in here, use the morale patch on the front so that they can say, see where the meds are. Um, it'll certainly help should they need to. Large main pocket. So this is more of these YKK zippers. Um, Ambiopen on this, I much prefer Ambiopen rather than having to try and find something to pull it pull it down. It also means it's just a little bit faster that you can pull that and it will just open it up. As far as how far it opens, it opens, so if this is, I'm just going to guess, I'm going to say this is about 150 millimeters. It goes down to about 40 millimeters from the bottom so should this you have uh, heavy things in here it certainly just won't splay open and let everything just fall on the floor on the front section i'll call this a front because it's the closest thing to you there is another zip pocket with mesh on here and it's that really nice double thick mesh Again, if you want to put your keys in here, if you have a locker that you use when you're at the range, whatever it is, then you can put that in there and also be able to see what's in there because you've got that mesh there. Um, the main section, I'd say there's probably about 40 mils worth of depth to this. As I've said in lots of other pieces of content, um, I always carry ranger bands around with me, so I've got a big loop of thick ranger bands in there, should I need them. I've got some microfiber cloths, just in case, you know, my optics get a bit messed up. And then towards the back here, if I pull this down, so you have one large slip pocket. Half of that then, so you have two smaller slip pockets. On the slip pocket here on the right, there are then three, uh, um, elastic sections that you can put stuff into and then on the other side in case you want to put in larger tools that you always want to have access to if you've got a certain rifle that you use a certain set of tools with then you have two wider um, elastic loops there as well. Now the one thing that I haven't touched on, I'm just going to have to lift this up just a little bit, I feel like I'm kind of lifting my belly up for everybody to see. So at the bottom here there is another dangler pouch. 
This is completely removable, so here on the side, the actual dangler pouch itself and uh, the, the, the bit that runs off the pot bottom of the rig. So there are molly slots or pals webbing loops through there, which means if I lift that up like that, that was like a very strange angle, didn't it? Um, you can undo these and you can completely take this off if you don't want to. Or if you have other rigs and this is something that you want to then pass between different rigs, it certainly makes it easier so that you don't have to take everything out of here and, uh, and, and put it into others. But then again, so you have ambi open here, both zips. These will open up and then you can put additional items in here. I have an extra set of gloves just in case. There's a small med kit for scratches, boo-boos, that sort of thing. There's also a tourniquet, or tourniquet, which the vast majority of the world call them, but some people like to pronounce the T on the end. Um, but should you need that, it will also fit in as well. So, I mean, I use this for airsoft skirmishing, but if you're using this in the real steel environment, obviously you'll know that's very important to keep. I also want to say thank you to my brother for sending that tourniquet to me. You know who you are. Yes, I bloody love you. So that's the main setup on here, but it's not just this. There's also a part of the suspension system as well that we just need to quickly have a look at. So yeah, so this works off the tried and tested H system that has been used by so many different manufacturers. Um, I previously mentioned we have these two clips on either side, so whether you're a lefty or a righty and prefer to take it off either way. Um, I'm, a, I'm a righty, so I take it off this side. Um, the bottom clip is the clip that goes around your waist, and this just means that it gives it that extra stability. When you're running, if you're going full tilt across whatever you're running across, you certainly don't want this lifting up, and that is what the bottom strap does it's really just there to stabilize it the other strap which if I take it off like this this is where your H system comes in so it runs it runs up oh runs across your shoulders and then between your shoulder blades at the back there is another piece of webbing there that just holds the two together. The straps on this are very minimal straps so if you prefer to run a plate carrier and rather than having everything attached to the plate carrier on the front you wanted to run one of these across the top of that as far as the Strappage, strappage, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, strappage, that's new. Um, very minimal across the top of there, and won't add additional bulk if that's something that if that's something that you're concerned about. There are two additional buckles here at the front, so if you did again want to have really quick access to it, you can't get your hands above your head. I don't know, let's say you went swimming, nobody likes to drown, so you can undo the front, you can undo the side, and then it will just naturally just fall off you from, from the weight that's on here. Um, extra nice little feature on the back here as well, so um, across these the, the section that's the goal post, the rugby goal post, because that's the real manly sport, um, there is some additional hook and loop on here, so should you want to put a name strip on there, a light, whatever it is that you just need to make sure that you can be seen by whoever it is that's behind you. Um, there is an additional section on there as well. Getting it on, very simple, over the head. Here's that bit that goes in underneath your armpit. I don't know why I held onto it, I've never done that before. Um, but that just clips in and then you've got the bit that goes, runs round your waist. And then you're in, you're good, you're ready to go. Now, one thing which I should have mentioned before I put this on here, which I think, I don't know, if there was anything that I could change about this. Oh, I do have to have a, add a caveat to that, and that is that I still do think that this is an exceptional um, training chest rig kind of thing. So on the back here, like you have with other rigs, is the fact that you will have a hook and loop section on this. So if you wanted to, you could then attach it as a placard onto a plate carrier. This doesn't do that, okay? As far as having that modularity and being able to stick it to something else, it, it, it just doesn't have that. Whereas the, comp the competition rig that you know, we'll, we'll have a look later, or on another day, children, um, that does have that. Unfortunately, what that means is, so Helicon Techs even have these, so these are additional uh, panels that you can put onto the side. They will stick on there and then you can have, uh, th there's another M4 magazine there and then you'll get the, 
they, they come in pairs. Uh, it will stick onto the side there. Now this will stick, but I mean, it, it's kind of friction. If I was to put a magazine in there, it certainly wouldn't work. Um, if I was to try and put the, uh, the, the loops onto here, again, you know, it, it, it would just fall off in a second. If I was to update this to the training rig Mark II, that's the one thing that I would change about this. I would have hook and loop across the back here um, with, a, with a cover that you can tear off. That way, if you wanted to add more modularity or even add a cummerbund to this, I'm not sure why you'd want to add a cummerbund to it, but if you wanted to, it would just mean that some of these straps that come under the armpit, you could then move some of those straps just a little bit further back. I've not found in the maybe six months that I've owned this and been skirmishing with it, I've certainly not found that they are hot spots. But I could imagine for some people they possibly would be just being able to move that away further round the side, away from the ribs, closer to uh, closer to your closer to your back. I can I can imagine that would help. But that's just a very very small thing that I would change about this. I, I do genuinely think that this is a this is a great chest rig. Now yet again, I think the training mini rig is Helicantex doing what Helicantex do best. They're listening to the people out there that are actually using these so that they can develop products that are out there for exactly what you need this for. As a training rig, I think it does exactly what you need. Everything is here to the front. You've got all of the different things that you would need possibly if you are uh, airsoft and you're skirmishing. Whether you are at the range with real steel, you can have everything on here if you've got certain training rigs and things that you like to go through, uh, certain drills, or whether you are using this for hunting or something else, again, I think there's a lot that will fit in this. Yes, it's designed as a training rig, um, but outside of that, I think it's very, what's the word, expandable. Is that expandable the right word? It's scalable probably is the better word, um, so that you can, you can do what you need with this in a training environment, but then you can also take it to where, also take it to other situations as well. So yeah, really impressed. I think it goes hand in hand. Uh, there's, there's very little that I've tried from Helicon Tex that I just genuinely haven't hated. They've all been actually really, really great products, and it, 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 it's shocking that I almost seem surprised from that. But um, yeah, great company. Now. As I mentioned at the beginning of this, a second great company that I also want to say thank you again to is Military First here in the UK uh, for sending this my way and for the continued support that you have for my channel. Of course, I will leave all of the links below so that you can see more from Military First where you can pick one of these up, their social media links, my social media links as well. But for now, as always, stay safe, stay Moorlander and stay tactical. I feel like I fluffed it a bit there for a second. I lost track, I lost track of what I was going to say. I think like I pulled it back. If you notice, it sits lower on this, on this, uh, on this side. That's not this fault. And I've even made sure that the straps are exactly the same length. Uh, so during, towards the end of the 90s, here in the Kingdom of the Moorlands, a huge pastime that um, was certainly very popular at the time was. Um, was uh, polar bear wrestling. Uh, we had a huge influx of polar bears because it was quite quite a cold winter. Um, and yeah, I absolutely love polar bear wrestling. And I broke my collarbone. So one of my shoulders is higher and lower than the other one. So if you ever see stuff like this and you think, that's weird, Randy, why doesn't it fit on one shoulder like it does the other? That's because this shoulder is about half an inch shorter and about half an inch further forward. Um, which is really crap when it comes to me wanting to buy a jacket and I'm going, going to get measured up and obviously everything's tailored for me being the king of the moorlands but yes that's why this one fits a little bit further down can't even get that one to, to fit like that because as soon as I do and as soon as I let go it just it just rides back up to where where it needs to be but randomly when I'm when I'm holding a pistol or oh, some pistol when I'm holding a rifle it fits perfectly because it just moves it just off that shoulder pad um, so they don't the butt doesn't wear on this so let's see it as a human modification if you want to get the perfect rifle stance engage in polar bear wrestling make sure you break your right collarbone 
but it needs to come in an inch and forward half an inch for it to work. Uh, so yeah, there you go, Human Engineering 101 with the, uh, maybe that should be another channel, more under Human Engineering. So yeah, you can, yeah, you can, you can definitely go now if you'd like. All right, bye.